what we're going to talk about tonight is kind of a, a game changer when it comes to the human experience. Uh, you could probably look at it as a new paradigm. It's certainly a new paradigm in cancer treatment. You know, chemo, uh, surgical intervention, and it, it is just a real limited mindset in terms of uh, pharma revenue driving that entire model as a alternative cancer treatments by and large are even worse um, from an outcome perspective. So, you know, there are probably a lot of people uh, out there that have tried, you know, ozone therapy and hyperthermia and high dose ascorbic acid and IPT and, the, you know, hyperbaric, the list goes on and on. When it comes to the alternative world and the complexity therein, I think people kind of get disillusioned there as well because it's, you know, they're spinning their wheels uh, in, in anecdotal grease quite often. Kind of maintain that somewhat reserved, you know, default position of, of being a little skeptical. You should be. I think that's healthy. You need to really ha have some really solid due diligence. You know, over the next couple of years, we're going to try to uh, beef up our presence in the journals. And as we uh, pursue our clinical trials in India and elsewhere, um, we're just going to try to accumulate some some peer review um uh, evidentiary support for what we're doing, but uh, very few will will cite organizations that have a science based alternative to the slice, dice, cut, and burn model. Uh, but as we go through the information, and as you go through your information journey with us, um, you're going to be in pretty good shape, I think, just in terms of being able to ascertain and, quite frankly, discern if we're the real deal. Is this really revolutionary? And, and these are some of the questions you should probably be asking, but do these guys really have a theory of causation that identifies the cause and cure of cancer at the root level? Or, you know, they really have experience of 52 different cell lines. I mean, can they, can there actually be a cure for cancer? It just sounds ludicrous to even hear that kind of an idea emanating from my mouth. Um, now that's going to be your job. I mean, you're, it's going to be your job to make that determination. We'll provide you with the resources, uh, and you can get a taste for that on the front end of the website. And then as we give you a login to get into the back end of the website, you'll have more information, maybe 30 hours of videos there, uh, white papers and inter interviews with university uh, researchers and so forth that have experience investigating the science, that have been hired to investigate the science outside of our own internally derived uh, results from our own studies, you're going to have a pretty good feel. I mean, it's not going to be like a Pfizer or a Lilly, but you're going to have a pretty good feel for, I think, being able to kind of sniff out whether this is, uh, whether this sounds plausible or not. Um, but there are some disclosures. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but there are some disclosures that you need to be aware of. There's some very important uh, disclosures with regard to, um, to, our current and previous organization. Uh, there's a lot of information that you're going to have access to, but in, thir in 2013, this let me give you kind of a summary and then we'll open it up for some Q&A. A group, um, let's just call them a group, funded at the highest levels of the medical industrial complex, uh, orchestrated a very well um, thought out, a, a com very complex attack against our organization. Uh, consider at the time that we were... Um, uh, maybe not in 2013, but probably by 2015 or so, I think we were the largest uh, alternative cancer treatment um, organization in the world. You know, we had doctors in 18 countries. We had patients in 24 countries. So it wasn't surprising that we would be the target of, you know, uh, various things circulating through Facebook and Twitter. But we we became the target of a very, a very uh, widespread disinformation campaign, a dissident suppression campaign uh, that was well-funded. Uh, later, we found out by two of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, we know this because in 2006, we hired a uh, retained the services of a what you'd call a counterintelligence a digital forensics security firm who after about six months of investigation found out who was behind this our treatment uh, and here's the big one was curative okay when I say curative when we're talking about something that has remedial potential, you would have to say that it would be the total and complete disappearance of the condition um, without relapse. 
by 2013, we had already shown effectiveness in 52 different cell lines in cancer. That'd be like 500 years in the mainstream, right? So we were, we were kind of like not willing to say we're going to cut people off um, just so that we can become a big pharmaceutical company and make a bunch of money because it was working in a lot of different areas. Uh, granted that our model wasn't the most effective to reach the, the largest number of people. And so, the, you know, in, in essence, what happened, uh, which was really kind of the destruction of our organization, turned out to be a really good thing because out of the ashes came the new model. But attacks against us, as you'll learn as you get through the information, there's a, a legal report written by a, a, a licensed law firm in the States. It reads like a spy novel. Uh, the cyber attacks against us and it were not only against us as an organization, but they broke it down to even our employees. Employees, They would go attack our employees on their personal Facebook pages. They would send packages in the mail. They would do psychological warfare. This is the kind of psychological warfare, including death threats. But I mean, it was uh, just to give you an idea of the sophistication, not only on the disinformation front, but on the cyber front. Um, it was like NSA level hacking, cracking. At one point, they actually took over our website completely. Uh, and if a client submitted a form they intercepted that and then they would go about with their disinformation with that client. And it took us a while to figure out, you know, what happened to our website. They took it over, literally took it over. Um, so it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty interesting um, that uh, they hijacked our software applications, did SQL injections. You know, we spent uh, probably five to $700,000 just in the development of our software that we used to manage the cases. Been, they were either tapping our phones, hacking our phones. They did hack our cell phones. We know that. Um, I won't go into everything there, but it, basically, it was it was really, really quite quite scary, quite frightening. Um, and they were deleting, modifying, misquoting, you know, fabricating information about the protocol overnight. From one day to the next, we woke up with thirteen hundred websites populated with fake information. Information like, you know, the catalyst that we spent several million dollars developing was just water. Well, I mean, people can see that that's not true because we have third-party universities, you know, sharing PCR data, and so that that's a little hard to believe unless somebody's really gullible. But and say, oh, these guys are you know, criminals and, and so forth. So, but the power, whatever, whatever the, that power structure was, was enough to get them to drop the research that we were conducting. Um, they propagated rumors uh, and after, you know, they would go into to forums and blogs and, and, you know, pose as patients and put in fake, you know, fake uh, entries and, and they were just all over the internet. Um, and then ultimately they packaged up their little fake dossier, submitted it to the FDA. And of course, you know, the FDA, right? Uh, they're, they're a criminal organization. <laughs> so is it surprising to know that the FDA would come after somebody in the non-conventional realm with guns blazing? I don't think so. And that's exactly what they did. And of course the FDA subpoenaed our emails. <laughs> FDA, criminal Office of Criminal Investigation. You know, if we went to trial, um, but we decided, you know, we better move out of the United States because this place is crazy. Uh, it, it really is. I mean, it's a, the FDA is a suppression apparatus. Just with the hackers, um, the security firm that we had hired, I, I was on the phone with the guy one day that's the president of the firm. He was interested in talking. Um, and he said that the, ta the attack against our organization was second only to the attacks against the Sony Corporation by the North Korean government, if you remember that. It's going back several years. Uh, so, yeah, was it a learning experience? Yeah. Was it scary? Yeah. But we learned a lot, and out of the ashes has come a much stronger model. There's a full legal report on that, point-by-point -point rebuttals, et cetera. You'll find that once you log in. We don't let people log in unless they have a reason to log in. You know, if somebody's, you know, if we're interested in somebody being a client, uh, not everybody can be a client. If we're moving into the mainstream, right? In a, in a sense, we're not doing that in the States right now, but outside of the States, it's all mainstream. All the people that we're working with are, you know, um, we'll probably stay away from the U.S. journals for maybe two to three years. So the bad news is uh, we don't accept everybody. Um, we also have uh, our enrollment uh, throughput is somewhat uh, limited. We have a limited number of people that we allow to enroll each month. Now that is changing a little bit. It's not a big deal because we're 100% referral. Aside from Matt's 
friends, you know, within the Facebook group, uh, which is just a little side uh, thing. It's a hundred percent referral. So we are controlling it by not, we don't do any kind of marketing or anything like that. And we'll just kind of explore the details together. But let me tell you what the requirements are for the program. Um, you have to review the information on the site. If somebody's not going to our site, reviewing the information, that includes the white paper, then they don't even move past that. We have to know that they've gone to the site, gone over the site thoroughly, watched the little video you know, modules and gone through the white paper. Once they've done that, you can just go to the contact page and request a consult. In the comments section, we try to make our contact forms really simple. So give us as much information as you can. I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, I'd like a consult, but we'd like to know why you'd like a consult. Tell us a little bit about your condition. Um, and, and that way it'll, it'll help us understand, you know, whether, uh, whether it makes sense for us to get on there or not. If you're a doctor and you just want to talk science, maybe research partnerships, uh, that kind of thing, uh, we can entertain that as well. But just make sure you disclose that as you request the consult. And then we'll give you access to the other